Hi there. In um, this video I want to talk about um, an issue that is very close to my heart. Um, it's easy, especially now that we have this crazy, crazy situation um, that we're in the middle of. <laughs> uh, it's easy to forget that there are other things, other issues that uh, we need to um, attend to, so to speak, uh, as well. And one of those are uh, wild animals and uh, how we should, um, what can I say, uh, not take wild animals and wildlife for granted. Now, in, in here in Norway, we have now, they're uh, building these uh, giant wind turbines and they will be killing and they are already killing lots of birds, birds of prey in particular and uh, seabirds and so on which makes me very angry to be honest with you and we also have wild animals hit by cars we have uh, sadly many people hunting that should never be allowed to hunt because they do not do it in a proper and decent way uh, and there are also animals that they get injured and um, there is one guy, a good man, uh, who, who comes from Israel actually. Uh, he came to Norway and he saw that in Norway we didn't have any means of helping wild animals who got injured. So he decided to do something about that. This is not a trending topic, but it is important. It is immensely important. Um, I, a few years ago, I found an owl, a dead owl, no visible wounds, lying on the ground under a tree in my garden. One morning it was just lying there. Probably lead poisoning, someone had shot it, you know, and uh, um, it survived, but it was probably killed by lead poisoning. I don't know, but um, we have cases like that and uh, it makes me very sad. Uh, we should have means to help wild animals. Uh, I also tried to capture a fox uh, who had this disease where they lose their fur. That was this winter. I did not manage to, to capture that fox uh, because I don't know, maybe it died, it froze to death, I don't know, but okay. I'm going to um, uh, switch over to um, the interview that I did with this very decent, very good man. Uh, I'm impressed by his work and uh, you know what, I'll stop talking and we'll go straight to the interview. What I hope is that uh, you will continue watching uh, and learn a little bit about what he is doing. You will find a link to um, his, uh, his website uh, in the video description. And in the video description and in all my video descriptions, you will also find links to some other animal charities. Uh, so please stay with me. I guess YouTube will put an ad after I stop talking and before the, the interview or something like that, but uh, uh, <laughs> I can't do so much about that. So, okay, um, here comes the interview and I hope you will find it interesting. Okay, so we have uh, Aviv here from, uh, all the way from Israel actually. Um, the, the <laughs> um, we needed uh, someone from Israel to come to Norway to teach us uh, how to take care of uh, wild animals. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Norwegian Wildlife Hospital? Sure, I will be happy to. Uh, the Norwegian Wildlife Hospital uh, was established in 2013 after I was uh, working as a vet and got a number of uh, wildlife patients who needed help and got it and i thought that this is a more a uh, need that is there that need to be addressed um 
I uh, began during my work to collect equipment and got to a situation where I got a small clinic available and uh, I dedicated to wildlife species. That was uh, all the way to 2017. We treated uh, many animals, many birds of prey. Um, in 2017, I took a break. I had to go and work with Mother Cine, as uh, I just couldn't live from it. And that was a problem. Okay. Uh, now I'm trying to move the wildlife hospital to Stavanger and see if I can uh, get more patients because of that and uh, see if it can be more sustainable. Exactly. And the Norwegian Wildlife Hospital is a, is a non-profit organization. And just to make it clear to everyone, it's, it's run by veterinarians. Uh, so you, you actually know what you're doing here. I hope so. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I uh, studied many years for that. Yeah. Well, um, I I often wonder about a certain attitude that I I see among certain people. Uh, they don't really care about animals, uh, and I've seen this. It it kind of it always surprises me when I see this because you can have even people who say that they care about the environment, but they don't care so much about the animals living in out in the woodland and so on. Um, I myself found an owl uh, under a tree uh, on our property. Uh, I haven't been able to, to figure out what happened to that owl, but it was dead, of course, lying on the ground. And, um, my suspicion is that someone shot it um, and it was poisoned by lead. Is, is that something that you see in your work? I see lead poisoning, definitely. Mm. I have to say that I saw many lead poisonings, not many, but uh, around uh, five cases of lead poisoning in eagles. Mm. But I have to say that those eagles don't come to me anymore because they are dying on the wind turbines. Oh yeah. Um, now I'm, I'm. I will try not to make this very political, but I think it's. Oh, sure. it's not <laughs> no, 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 no. Thing. It's everyone watching my channel. know, I think they know that I do not support uh, the wind turbines and and that uh, what they're doing there, uh, devastating Norwegian wilderness areas and all that. Uh, it makes me upset. Yes. But um, yes. are you expecting to see? more birds of prey and so on uh, being injured by, by those in the future? I just seen one last week. We were going out to the terrain to look for one, oh. a buzzard in this case. Mm. Yeah, we couldn't find him. We assumed that he went hiding and wasn't to be found and he will be dying in the field, suffering. Um, it's a third case I have that is a surviving a windmill um, injury. The first one was a white-tailed sea eagle. The second one was a black vulture. Mm. It was the first time to Norway. The third one was that, and it's it's a shame. It's just it, a shame. It is, and I actually... I, I don't cry that often, but I started crying when I saw that now I think we could say it's a famous or infamous <laughs> photo of this woman holding an eagle with only one wing. Have you seen that yes. photo? Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's a huge tragedy and a shame. Uh, yes. Um, but also, uh, let me just tell you about the local foxes here where I live. I live in the south eastern part of Norway and we have foxes here and uh, I like foxes and um, the problem here seems to be that they get um, is it called manch? Ma manch? Scabies. Okay, yes. yes. Yeah. Scabies. Yes. The, when, they, when they lose their, their fur, right? Yes. 
Yeah, uh, so some of them, I understand, they actually freeze to death during winter. That's true. Mm. Um, the solution here locally is to shoot them. Um, yeah, I, what I did, I, I tried to, um, I, uh, I tried to capture one of them um, to, to get treat, to get it treated, but then I, I, I couldn't find it. Um, I, I suppose it was already dead by then. This, this was last winter or this winter it was. <clears throat> um, or maybe someone just shot shot it, and um, but then you know the problem would be who's going to treat this fox because nobody, not even the veterinarians here, would do that. Um, do you have any plans or you know long term plans of uh, uh, having uh, a set to set up a wildlife hospital in in other parts of the country? I have such a plans, but it depends a bit on the other uh, organization that I don't want to go into the business exactly now, and okay. because it's uh, it's haven't matured yet. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the wildlife hospital will be very nicely made if it was a one clinic in Stavanger and one clinic in the east. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm trying to work on such a solution. And meanwhile, I'm trying to bring animals with uh, planes. It is uh, possible to send the uh, injured animals with SAS. It costs roughly 2,700 kroner to fly it from Oslo to Stavanger. Okay. And we are trying to fly such a fox from Feathers uh, exactly nowadays. Really? Just waiting to see if, yes, we're okay. waiting to see if, uh, if the animal will be caught or not. Actually, in this case, we, we got even a, a lift from from Fredrikstad to Haugesund that will take the fox. They don't need the plane this, okay. this time. Yeah. So okay. we're just going and collecting the animal in Haugesund instead of Stavanger, and that's, that's okay. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, yes, um, you. I I grew up in in uh, Oslo, or the, not the city, but the, the Oslo area. And I spent a lot of my childhood years, uh, a lot of that time I spent, uh, spent out in the woods. And um, I can remember when we ha still had the, 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 the only surviving um, bears, the, the wild bears in, in uh, Vassfeide. Um, and also I remember the wolves. We still have some of those, but what I find is that the woodland and the wilderness becomes very, it, it, it's losing something. Um, and I don't know, are, are people aware of this? Are they aware of the value of having wild animals out in the woodland? What, what's your uh, impression? Are Norwegians just stupid when it comes to that or? or? <laughs> I'm sorry to say so. It's it seems so. It seems that mm. no wolf can go safe in here because he will snap a kid or or anything, something like that. This is something that never happened in Norway ever, as to my mm. understanding. Yeah, um, well, only anecdotal fair, fairy tales from like the medieval like, ages, like, like like fairy tales of eagles taking babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's it, it doesn't exist. Mm. And, no, it's, and I think uh, it's, it's time to get rid of this fear and say they have a place here, they belong here. Maybe it's the it's the way that the, that that um, sheep are managed that are uh, that are not uh, really going well with this. Someone think that he will release his sheep. And get hundred percent, hundred and twenty percent back mm. when they come from the mountains, and it's not realistic to think so. And it's not only wolves; it's diseases, it's breaking legs, it's yeah. whatever. So, so blaming wolves for everything is is definitely not the point. Yeah, for for those uh, watching this or listening who don't know, in Norway we have this 
strange custom of just letting the sheep out in the mountains, in the woodland and so on and hoping for the best <laughs> and they just walk around there uh, and then they collect them at the end of the, the summer um, and the, the, those sheep are, are not really made for wilderness living if I can put it that way uh, so there, there's a lot of suffering there uh, it's, it is better than having them locked up in a in, in, in a building, of course, but um, uh, yeah, as, as you say, blaming the wolves for the loss of sheep is just ridiculous. Uh, I read somewhere that the tick, uh, the tick borne yes. diseases t kill a lot more sheep than the wolf yes. does. Yes. Um, and, but, and there is no <clears throat> treatment for tick borne diseases that last three months. When you release the animals, you can treat, treat them for one month. At, at the most, so mm. the animals are exposed to tick diseases, and most of the ticks have t have diseases in them, and so it goes. Yeah. Um, I have dogs, and sometimes uh, we have walked through areas with you know uh, tall grass and so on, and we we immediately stop and we pick off the ticks because they can have like ten ticks on them. Uh, so we know that you need to get those off b before they, they bite and, and start uh, sucking the blood and all that. Um, your, it says here on your website, and I will post the link in the video description, that um, the first wild patient, <laughs> wild animal that you, you, you treated here in Norway was a tawny owl uh it says they're successfully treated and released um the part about releasing the animals is interesting uh and important um are there cases where the animal is injured in such a way that it it cannot be released back into the wild and then what do you do the law in this country is very clear. Any animal that is uh, not releasable should be euthanized. No. And this is also a bit of nonsense. I did not know that. Uh, you, you don't have to agree with me, but uh, in many birds of prey centers that have uh, made for rehabilitation of birds, they use they use birds that cannot get back into into nature as uh, adopting parents for those animals who are found in nature and are put to the parents in order to avoid imprinting, for example. This is a very, very important thing that's not practiced at all in Norway. And I'm, I'm trying to speak with Milio Delectorat and Matheson if there's any place for it at all. Um, because there's no point that the birds will be sitting in a cage in Austria and do nothing. They could sit in the same place, in the same in the same instance in Norway and do something for for nature. They are also donating feathers for uh, those uh, uh, instances where, where uh, uh, inpatients have been uh, have been uh, uh, bruising the feathers in a way that they can't be used. We can replace those feathers on the day and release the animal the same day. Really? So yes. We did that. We did that before. Like transplanting feathers? In a way, yes. Without the <laughs> transplantation, just replacing. But okay. yes, it's done under general anesthesia, so it's most accurate. Okay. It's, it's possible to do. And that's wow. also a value of, uh, of uh, wild animals that sitting in a cage and producing enough feathers for replacement for the same species. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to... I know that many people in Norway would not like to see a bird of prey sitting in the in the cage, but uh, I think that it's a better solution than killing them when they can't be released anyhow. And another thing that is most important is that you can use them for education. You can educate people and you can actually get children, Norwegian people, children to see birds of prey from close distance and, and get familiar with the 
with the animals. I think it's very important. Yeah, well, I guess um, if it was up to me, I would have a very hard time to put the animal down, uh, to kill the animal if, let's say, I had the opportunity of building a, a very big cage uh, or something like that. Now, I don't like to see animals in cages, obviously, but uh, uh, if it's like it can never fly again, um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, think about it. It's an interesting point. I know that there are people who think this way and there are people who think that way. And it's all legitimate. But the fact is that, that killing animals that are nearly endangered is, is not helping anything. The genes can flow on and, the, and the, there can be even a, a breeding, a, in captive breeding programs for such an animals. They are mm. good parents. Yeah, well, the, the only wild birds of prey that I have seen in cages has been in um, uh, that, um, that zoo in, uh, in, uh, in Kristiansand, nice. uh, those, uh, the big owls, the, um, yeah, yeah, the, um, yeah. and I, I, I did not like to see that, to be honest with you, uh, that was depressing to me. But, I, um, think, I think that we talk about this specific cage because I've seen it too and I didn't like it. But I say, if they are allowed, why can't we make something better? Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, well, it's uh, at least, uh, I guess, yeah, it's, what I think is that we, we, in Norway at least, we kind of, we, our standard solution uh, is to say, well, if the wild animal is injured, we will just kill it. Yes. Um, and I had, I'm seeing that every year here because the hunters, they, well, the hunters, the local hunters said they are not very good at hunting. Uh, so they will injure lots of animals. They will scare lots of animals and they will scare, for instance, the moose and the, the roe deer. So they, they run into the roads and get hit by cars. Um, and if that happens, they will try to track down the, the animal. And as far as I know, they will never try to treat the animal. They will just shoot it. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Um, but again, you know, with the foxes, um, my personal opinion here uh, about the foxes is that they should stop hunting foxes. Now, you don't eat a fox. Um, and I know there are arguments that, well, we need to keep the population down. But when it comes to the foxes, at least that's not a valid argument, at least in Norway. Um, I know in England and many other countries as well, they have like fox rehabilitation centers. Uh, I would really like to see that in Norway. Uh, for instance, the foxes with the, the, that sickness, that parasite, uh, when they lose the fur, uh, they can be treated and released back treated. into the wild. Yeah. So I really want to see that here. <laughs> I'm it sure you, you do as well. <laughs> slowly but surely. The point is that we are a very small organization. Hmm. Uh, it's basically run by me and by a bunch of uh, volunteers. Um, that are good, doing good work, um, helping me, and uh, I think there is a place for more. Yep. I think there is a place for having another veterinarians and having me more mobile and moving between the country and collecting animals. Hmm. Um, that can be taken to a clinic either in the east or in the west to be treated. Yeah. Um, but what we need for doing that is more money because we are very poor, actually. Hmm. And if um, people will will donate more money, we will be. We have plans from here to America. Um, we can really make a change. Yeah, and I I always say that when it comes to rescuing animals, um, you you won't change the world, but you will change 
the world for that particular animal if you help that animal. Uh, yeah. we, we, we have had many rescue dogs and we have two now. They're lying over there sleeping on the couch. <laughs> um, and, and I think this is what you're doing is very important. Um, I know there are probably people in Norway who will say, well, we should rather spend that money on helping, I don't know, poor kids uh, or something like that. But we can do both. I think we can do both. I think there is enough money for doing both. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Um, and now a lot, lots of the people who will be watching this or uh, listening uh, uh, will be in other countries. So I will, what I will say is that uh, you can uh, also find some animal charities in the video description. Uh, they are in all my video descriptions. Um, but if you are in Norway, please consider to, to have a look at what Wiltsyk uh, uh is, is doing, because you really are dependent on donations, right? Yeah. Yeah. We get a bit of uh, money from Matsumasine for okay. every patient we are paying. Mm. We are, for every patient, sorry, we are getting. Um, as long as it was a, a first first help to animals, not the help to the deal. And uh, that makes us going, but we are not able to 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 uh, to grow and because it's not enough. I understand. So, yeah. We we get we get the basic that we need, but we we, we need more investments in us. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time. I'm sure you are busy. Um, but, thank you. Uh, well, it was a pleasure uh, talking with you. And uh, again, uh, the link to your website uh, is in the video description. Uh, it's in English and in Norwegian. Um, so please have a look. And you're also on, uh, let's see, Facebook. Um, yes, Norwegian Wildlife Hospital. Yeah, Norwegian Wildlife Hospital. Or in, no or in Norwegian, Viltsykehuset. Yes, okay. Um, again, thank you very much. Um, keep thank doing you. what you're doing. It's important okay. work, and I, th I think you're a good man. And uh, I don't say that very often, so uh, uh, okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Have a nice day. Um, we'll too. talk later. Bye.